The green team drives and reviews our first EV. Join John Lesage and I for a ride in the Chevy Equinox, an electric vehicle powered by the latest GM hydrogen technology. We're in 2008 Chevy Equinox with uh, Shad Walsh and from General Motors. And we're going to, I'm gonna drive this around and learn a little bit more about the Equinox. Okay. If I owned one of these and I was concerned about fueling, tell me how that would work. Where, what about the availability and how I go and do it? That probably is the biggest challenge right now with these fuel cell electric vehicles is the lack of infrastructure. Frankly, we just need more pumps. Here in Southern California, we have about 15 locations that offer hydrogen. And this particular vehicle gets about a 200 mile range. So basically, you can't be more than go 100 miles away from your closest fueling station. Is that um, something that is easy to do? How long would it take me to, to fuel up in that station? The fueling process is very simple. It's much like filling up a regular gasoline-powered vehicle. Essentially, you're transferring a um, 200 miles worth of electricity in about four minutes into the car. So it's like a charge taking four minutes. Um, the, the way it's set up, hydrogen fueling stations look very similar to petroleum gasoline stations. In fact, one of the models that oil companies are following is it just incorporating a hydrogen pump at existing gasoline stations. That's the easiest and most efficient way to do it. Mm -hmm. There's been uh, some coverage of the uh, Equinox test program that's achieved a, a million miles with a, with a hundred of them around the country. What's, what are people getting out of this? What are you learning? Yeah, Project Driveway is the name of the program. And as you said, it just hit one million miles of, of real world condition driving on these vehicles, just like this one. The biggest piece of feedback that we're getting is, uh, interestingly, the way the brakes feel. People note that it has the regenerative braking and that there's a slight difference in the way that it feels when you hit the brake pedal. And that's the only thing that they're really commenting on. To us, that says a lot because this vehicle is unlike any other vehicle on the road. And if the only thing that they're pointing out is the dif difference in the squishiness of the pedal, then we are hitting our goal of trying to make the transition from traditional vehicles to advanced technology vehicles like this. We're hitting our goal of making that transition seamless. This is, uh, are there changes happening to the Equinox since it came out two years ago? Yeah, most notably, the, the changes that were, are, are the, gonna have the biggest impact is in the, the design and engineering of the fuel cell stack. The fuel cell stack is, is pretty much the equivalent of the engine for this kind of a vehicle. And we've been able to make it about 30% lighter and smaller and using significantly less precious metals. And precious metals are what sort of the the cost value of the fuel cell stack is. So the next generation, which is, is done and, and ready to be put in, applied to a vehicle, is uh, much more affordable. What's the plan for uh, getting this out on the mass market? What, what's going to be next with the Equinox? The propulsion system is to a point where we can have it commercially viable by about 2015. But what needs to happen simultaneous or leading up to that date is we have to have the infrastructure built up. Right now, we can only sell these vehicles to people who live right here in Santa Monica, and that's it, because that's where the largest concentration of hydrogen stations are. So until there is a buildup of infrastructure, we're sort of saddled with being able to build these in a high enough volume to make them viable. The biggest point that we try to keep, that we keep trying to make with this car is that it's an EV. It is an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Instead of a big battery, it uses hydrogen to create electricity on board. So it's important that, that while right now all the buzz is about plug-in hybrids and plug-in EVs, if we're going to meet California's aggressive AB32 goals and if we're going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to a notable level from cars, we have to go at it at multiple pathways. It needs to be equal opportunity with plug-in hybrids, with advanced biofuels, and with EVs powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. How do you like it, John? I like it. How's that, how'd that go for you, Lane? Oh, it was really nice. <laughs>